Good day everyone, Garage King here, and we have a P0400 code, EGR code here. This is on a Nissan Maxima, this one's a 1996. Now that's a fourth gen, so 95 to 99 are gonna be the same. So it's something to do with the EGR valve. Now these ones are known to sort of have uh, clog up issues and stuff like that. There's an EGR tube under there. So we're gonna take it apart, do an inspection. It's way under there. And uh, let's see what we can figure out. Cause maybe we just need a cleaning and then we can get that check engine light off. So first we're gonna take off the air box. Let's make some room. So you can see we have a snap there, snap there, and a couple snaps, one there on the other side there, as well as a clip there for our mass airflow sensor. Uh, a clamp right there, so let's uh, let's undo let's undo this clamp, and then on the other side of the throttle body, we can even just use a flathead screwdriver get in there and undo that. So let's undo those things, uh, the couple clamps there, and let's at least just get this air box out of the way. It'll give us a whole lot more room. <laughs> just pan in here and I'll do a little homemade test to see if the EGR is actually seized up or whatever. You can see I'm putting my fingers in here and I'm just gonna push up and down on the diaphragm. So I can see it's moving. There we go. No problem there. So the tube always clogs up on these things. So the tube's at the back. Aha, there it is. There's the top part of the tube right at the very back. Uh, we can just leave the sensor in and unplug it. You can see there's two bolts there and then it goes all the way down just underneath to the EGR. Now I'm just gonna back out and you can see, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> like that's really gonna help. Okay, well, you know what? Let's see if I can get in here a little bit better. Here. Okay, so I showed you the top two bolts and actually here I am, I'm coming around the throttle body. I'm gonna tilt in here very very difficult with this lighting and I don't I don't even think I can get in there that way these Nissans I tell you anyway I was able to uh, to show you on the last shot that's where it is so you got to reach in and you can see it and then just follow the tube down with your hands and you will be able to get it out so it can be done all right so another angle coming at you so let's pan in here I moved the coolant lines out of the way didn't disconnect anything just the clamp just so I could move them and uh, there you go. There's a good shot of the EGR right there. So top two bolts are 12. Those should be able to come out. What I can't undo is this big bolt at the back and that's because the steel one is blocking it. And then you might think it's easy to take it off with a flare nut wrench, but I tried heating it and it does not want to come. So I do have an oxyacetylene, but I don't want to burn anything around it. So I got to be careful. Anyway, um, I might try with the oxyacetylene And it looks like this thing is just two rotten wrenches skipping off of it. And uh, I have a good quality wrench here. It's a snap-on, so no, have to undo, uh, have to undo the big bolt. I thought maybe that would be a little shortcut, but looks like it's not going to work. All right, so here's a good shot of it underneath. I got my light facing there, so you can see there's the EGR valve. You can see there's that big nut. There's actually the two. Can't see the other bolt in this picture, but you can see there's the two bolts. I'll throw an arrow up. So right there and right there, that should be the bolts uh, to take the tube off. And the EGR bolt, one of them, the studs is sticking out there and the other one's behind, you can't see, and there's that big nut. So I'm gonna try to get the big nut off actually from the bottom. I'm gonna see if I can put a wrench up in there and get it off. And if you're wondering what's on there hanging, that's just some penetrating fluid. I, you can see I soaked it pretty good. Um, and we can see if we can get it off. So anyway, just wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna to try to get it off from the bottom now. Okay, so you can see it's starting to get threaded off there. I just, there's no way I can hold the camera and uh, film at the same time. I took an oxyacetylene, just heated that back, that bolt, and then I used um, this. 
to get it off. So I just used a big, uh, big wrench like that. And then now all I'm doing is just slowly I'm doing it with, uh, with this. Now it would have been a lot easier to undo it, obviously, if I could have got this piece off right here, that piece off, but it's just, it's, I, I can't get that piece off. It's too rusted in there. And I'm afraid if I heat it too much, I might just destroy it. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm taking the big piece off right now. All right, so now I'm just gonna take off the EGR valve. I could have pulled that pipe back, but you know what, I don't wanna bend it, so I think it's easier just to take the EGR valve off, so if I can. There we go, there's one bolt. I don't know, I might even be taking the studs out. And that's one nut came out. There we go. And this way we'll be able to replace the hose on it. So you'll actually see it coming right out fresh off the press. And it is just the nut came out. So that's, that's good. Just gotta lift some hoses, some stuff is in the way up top. Man, these Nissans are tight. Holy moly. They're not the easiest thing to work on. And I got the EGR valve out. Oh, and it's like having a baby. Okay. All right, so we have the EGR valve at the bench. We don't need these big, those big wrenches anymore. So here's the EGR valve. Now here's the part that was just, it was getting rounded and it was, there was so much, I just couldn't get it off. So here's a better view of the EGR valve. It's off, so we're just gonna clean it. Now I did the blow test. So I just blew in here a little bit and uh, air comes out, so nothing's plugged. And if you look in here, uh, I might have to get a light in there, but anyway, it's, it's not too bad. And if I move the diaphragm, you can see I'm moving it just like I did originally. So we just need to clean this out. And this actually doesn't have any holes on it. I thought it had a little hole in it, but it doesn't. So that's good, so we don't have to replace that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really clean out all the carbon out of here, but this is the part that blocks those other two bolts for the EGR pipe that we're gonna take out next. But right now, let's just clean this piece up and then we'll get it back in. But yeah, I don't think we need to replace this EGR valve. I think it's fine. So that's good. We're just gonna clean it up and then uh, this, this can go back in. Now I know someone's gonna say, test it with a vacuum pump. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have our vacuum pump right here and I'll let you see the underside of the EGR just like this. So as soon as I apply vacuum, you can see it's moving just like that and it's holding. If we look at our gauge, we can see there it's holding. I just let it go so I can pump it up again. And our EGR is good. It's holding. And our diaphragm is up and as soon as I squeeze the button here to release uh, the vacuum out, we can see. So a lot of people will go replacing unnecessary parts we don't have to replace this part. It's totally good. It's holding vacuum. The EGR is totally fine. So like I said, we just got to clean it up. There we go. And if you're wondering how I'm doing my cleaning, I just got some of this, uh, it's like a top end cleaner, just dissolves carbon. And then I just have my cleaning brushes. So I just kind of fill it up in there and just clean around there. Make sure you're not too aggressive. You don't want to damage anything there. Just a little bit never hurts. And that's it. I'll just clean this puppy up. See, there's some some fluid in the bottom, but it's pretty clean. It was pretty gunked up. I mean, it's, we're not going to be able to clean it up perfectly, but this way at least there's plenty for airflow. You can see the bottom of the um, I don't know whatever you want to call it, their valve right there. So that's the bottom of the valve. But anyway, that'll be good and uh, it'll flow really good. Now that we have our EGR valve out, let's see if I can even get you a better shot. Oh, that's nice. So now you can see our EGR valve is actually out right there and there's the gasket still hanging on it. So it hasn't torn. So I did order a new gasket, but let's see if it doesn't come in time, then I can just put that safely back on. And then here is the two other bolts right there. So we're going to undo those two bolts. All right. So I have those two bolts off there. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. So you can see they're off there. 
So now on the top, I'm just undoing the top ones and it's pretty much impossible to see. You just got to feel around for them. You can see there's where the head of the ratchet is in relation to the engine. So it's very handy because you can hear it's undoing it now. So it's very, very handy to have a flex head ratchet just so you have some movement um, because if you have a fixed head ratchet, it's going to be really hard on an angle to get in there. So flex head ratchet, definitely recommended. There we go. And let's... Let's take it to the bench and let's discuss. All right, so here's the piece. I just left the sensor connected to it, disconnected at the throttle body. And you can see here, let me uh, get you a better view. It is totally plugged. There you go, look at the light, totally plugged. So nothing can go through, totally full of carbon. So I'm gonna have to just, I guess, drill this out and just work and just clean it as best I can. I may, I think I'm going to take this sensor out just so I don't damage it when I'm probably going to be jamming things through it to clean it, but that's what we got to do. So anyway, definitely needed to come out and be clean because as you can see, it is totally just packed full and how it goes on the back of the engine, I'll show you. So when it's on the back of the engine, it looks like this, you have two 12 bolt, two 12 millimeter bolts there, sorry, so 12 millimeter heads. This bolts to the back of the engine. You can get to it with the flex ratchet as I was showing. And then that pipe comes around here and then you have two washers on each of these and then a nut on each of these. So that's how it bolts to the engine, just like that. But I took, as you saw earlier, I took the EGR off first to clean it and glad I did so because you can see it's just packed full, packed full of gunk. So no kidding, it's gonna cause a check engine light. And there we go. Ooh, and look at that. So good thing I took that out. We're gonna clean that up. Not much on the other side. That was a hot side, but lots by the intake manifold. And there we go. That's it. So, <laughs> so reflection on the mirror. Anyway, it is full, just like the other piece. So sorry about the dirty mirror, but that's it on the rear of the engine. It's very, very difficult to uh, to see. Just trying to pan around. There's another view of it in the back of the throttle body. So just panning, that's where it is, right in the very, very back of the engine. So that's where we got to clean and we got to pick and dig it all out. So I'm going to install everything. And just so everyone knows, the top gasket on this is different than uh, the bottom gasket when you put it back on the engine. There's the top, just mounts like this, and this goes to the side. So here was uh, the top one. It's actually not that bad, you know, I could probably even reuse it, but I bought another one anyway. So here's uh, here's a gasket I'll use. So that'll be that's good for that. Now they didn't have any in stock for the bottom, so I'm just gonna put it on and that's why I didn't do a super good job cleaning it because it'll go on the same way it came off. And then this other gasket is for the EGR valve on the side of the engine. So let's go put it back together and hopefully this all works. All right, now I'm just gonna pan in here for you all to see. Let's get some good zoom on the camera here. There we go. And you can see, I actually have it hooked in there. So we can hook it right there. This is that long, long piece. There we go. And you can see the screw's gotta go on the other side. There's the old gasket there. I'm just gonna reuse the old gasket. So now it's kind of a bit of an acrobat trick on the top because we don't wanna drop the gasket and we have two, uh, two bolts. So I'm just gonna do that right now. All right, so I'm really happy, folks, that I didn't drop any bolts. You can see there's the bolts. They're on there right now, and now I'm just going to snug them up. I'm gonna do these ones first, and then I'll do the ones on the intake manifold, and then I'll come back to these. So I'll just snug them, go to the top of the intake manifold right there, and then I'll go back to snug them up. Now, for the one right there, I'll throw up an arrow, just so you can see exactly which one I mean, because my phone's in a good position. 
I actually just use a 12 mil stubby open-ended wrench to tighten it down and then I can get a box end on it when I just uh, pull back on that bar just a wee bit. And there is our two studs for the EGR. So I'm just gonna plop a new uh, gasket on. I have my gasket here, just gonna go underneath. There we go. There's our new EGR gasket. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna coat these threads with some anti-seize and then we'll put our EGR back on. All right, we have the EGR in now and you can see there's our vacuum hose. So that's all connected. That's where it should be. Our bolts are all back on. Now the only thing I have to do is get my big wrench in here and I just have to snug that one big bolt right there, I'll throw up an arrow, that thing there. There you go. So I just have to thread that on, screw that on. And then lastly, let's not forget, and this is the connector up top. So we just gotta connect this connector back to the connector on the throttle body. And what that one was, is that was a sensor that actually went into the tube. So once we do that, then we can just start putting the rest of the front uh, back together. That's easy, that's just the air box and we'll start it up, clear the code. So now I've run the vehicle and I have no diagnostic trouble codes. I've cleared them and run them, so uh, that did the job, so that worked, so awesome. Job well done. So what did I need to do this EGR valve? Well, you definitely need some pliers for the hose clamps. Uh, you definitely need a 12 with a ratcheting, uh, or sorry, a flex head ratchet. You definitely want that. What else? I used some stuff because uh, the bolts were tight. I had a 12 mil, 12 mil wrench, a 12 mil socket, and an extension. Um, uh, a pick for sure. Now these other things, these are just because I was just um, sort of pulling things apart and everyone's gonna do things on their own way so you don't need a, sp a specific size or a specific type of, of wrench or anything like that. These are the ones you're gonna need for sure. But other than that, oh sorry, don't forget Mr. Stubby. We needed him, the 12. But uh, other than that, that's, uh, you know, these, I also use oxyacetylene, which I know not many people uh, have access to. Just this bolt was really tight. And then also I used a big um, adjustable wrench to get the, I don't know, whatever you call it, that big bolt or big nut off the EGR valve. And then I just use this, I use this actually to tighten it back up once I thread it on, because I had anti-seize on everything, so it wasn't that bad, so I used that to tighten it on. But that's pretty much my, pretty much what you need. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe if you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Uh, trying to grow my channel, Garage King over and out. Any questions, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.